Can we please stop trying to make horror movies based on video games? Because the serious ones like this just don't work. Very quickly, if you are new here, I like to cover those movies that may get a little bit less talked about and less reviewed, and just try and find some hidden gems for either myself or recommend to you guys. So if you are new, please do hit subscribe, it lets me know you're enjoying this content. And that being said, on with the review. Choose or Die. Choose or Die is a new Netflix horror that's came out, where basically we're following a cursed video game from the 80s. That alone should just set up how badly executed this movie is. This movie opens very dark, very interesting as well, how they kind of give you the rules of the movie, with without that much dialogue. Basically there's an old game from the 80s and it's one of these text-based adventure games. A dad who seems quite timid and not really respected in his house shuts himself away, plays the game. And the game affects reality. What he's doing in the real world is coming through in the text in the game and he has to make decisions in the game which then affect reality. Kind of a two-way system here. And some of the choices throughout the whole movie, but definitely with the dad here, they're pretty fucked. Especially because he doesn't quite know what is going on as well. And some of the imagery in this movie is really strong and especially when it comes to the consequences of your choices. Oh fuck, some of it is very creepy. So we move away from the dad and open up on our two main leads here. We've got Kayla and we've got Isaac. Now they're two friends and they're programmers themselves. Isaac has clearly went and studied for this and qualified for it and is currently making his own game. Whereas Kayla has her own issues within her family and because of these you can kind of piece together that she didn't quite qualify, didn't graduate, is a little bit lost in the world at the moment but clearly just as intelligent as Isaac. So Isaac has this game himself in amongst just all of his storage and his clutter. He lives a bit like a slob here. Kayla takes the game away, boots it up, now she's invested, she's got this curse taking her over. Similar to the dad at the beginning of the movie, Kayla's introduction to this game is very strong in the way it's fucking with her and she's choosing what's happening in her surroundings as well. It was very well executed. Whilst the acting was really good in this movie, and definitely the chemistry that Isaac and Kaylee had was really good. They're believable as best friends, and also believable that Isaac wants it to go a little bit further. Kayla's not having it, and they bounce off that pretty damn well. And this is coming from me, and I'm a massive gamer, but movies like this just don't work. And it's always when they try and give you the history behind it and the origin of how this came to be. I think is where these movies fall short. Really takes the movie down a few pegs. So Kayla boots this game up at two o'clock in the morning, and the movie runs on like a 20 24 hour cycle so when she's first booted it up she needs to replay level 2 in 24 hours time so on and so forth. Now all whilst she's dealing with her mum and there's also this just shitty guy that's been thrown into the movie only so he can be brought back at the end of the film. He's not quite their landlord but he seems to have some kind of authority over the housing that she lives in. He just kind of walks in and out of their house, takes what he wants and it's just all round a black and white arsehole. You're meant to have no sympathy for him so when they pull him back in the movie he's there just for that purpose. Taking him out would have changed literally nothing. So Isaac gets fascinated with this game and I always feel like when it comes to a video game movie I can see why they went for the text based adventure because it will stand the test of time. If they try to make it where you're like in the game and it's 3D modelled over the years the movie will start looking a bit dated. There's a few movies like that where they've tried to do it with video games. With text based adventure that will hold up. So I can appreciate why they've taken this choice but it's the curse of this game. So somebody uncovered this curse back in the 80s. A game programmer himself. He managed to work out what all the symbols meant really to just amplify the curse for his own benefit. He programmed it into a game that people would then play. And in the movie's opening, so there's no spoiler here, it was then had to be widely distributed. Isaac's love for the retro, though is ham-fisted as you can fully expect from someone that just loves games from the 80s, their dialogue is always the same. There's always just a reference to something that we all know. It's kind of cool, but it's only thrown in there just so that we know that he likes old school stuff. When the games though are affecting reality and people are put into a trance, you know, the people that the decisions being made in the game are about, fucking hell because you can see that they're made to take certain actions but they can still fully feel pain you know it's like they've got full body paralysis so they're aware of what's happening they just have no control over it and that i think was the most unsettling part of this doesn't happen often unfortunately i mean it's good that it's not happening but that was the most unsettling part of this film after a couple of levels here though kayla realizes that she needs to talk about this so she goes straight to isaac with it for level three of the game and they start looking into it themselves and the film gets a little bit cliche here as you can fully expect isaac being a programmer knows a way to get a little bit more information out of the game and try and track its origins. He does this and it takes them to an abandoned facility which has a fully functioning phone in the middle of the room 
and some electrical equipment is still set up. Why does every movie do this? Because it's just expecting a character to go to these coordinates and uncover a bit more truth. And also nothing has happened with this building. It's not been knocked down, reused, resold or anything like that. And as we get deeper and deeper into the film, that is when we learn that this curse was put onto the game. Now, if anything, although they're trying to answer a question, it does ultimately just raise a few more for myself, which leads me perfectly into, I have questions. This is that part where I'm going to talk about a few things that I think just stood out to me or really just weren't fully answered or explored within the movie. So it's full spoilers ahead for this next little section. The developer that made the game turns out to also then, at the end of the movie, be in the building that Kayla is cleaning. So does he own that building? Because part of this curse's whole philosophy, by making someone else suffer, you get a benefit in some way. So has he gotten rich off the game and that's how he maybe owns this new building now and it just so happens that Kayla also works in it? The building being abandoned just really doesn't make sense for movies as a whole. Like the fact that they've left the equipment still set up in it. And at the start of the movie, they do make a point that the dad is also retro. So it's like modern setting as well for the start of the film. He also just loves 80s technology. And he then distributed this game. So the setup of this warehouse, that must have been there since the 80s, even though only now has the dad played the game, got it further out. He had to redistribute it so that it wasn't going to affect his family anymore because he started fucking them up as well. And if it has been distributed, Isaac himself hasn't played it. It was just in a box. Has nobody else played the game? Because in the movie's grand finale, Halo goes to the dad at the start of the movie with coordinates she gets in the game and they're each other's kind of final boss and I will say that final battle was very interesting the way that they were inflicting damage on themselves his wife and his son both have been fucked up and that face shit that the son has really creeped me out as well their emotions are wanting to attack the dad but by attacking the dad they're actually hurting Kayla so it's quite an interesting dynamic there and a fucking good fight to watch and also I'm just going to say this, the coordinates for his house weren't on screen long enough. We see Kayla tending to Isaac's body, and then it pulls out and we see that the game monitor shows the coordinates. She's still over with Isaac's body, and these coordinates come up and then fade away very quickly. There's no way in hell she managed to get them down. And with Kayla's decisions that she's making, people are dying or getting injured or she's facing her own kind of mental struggles. She shows very little remorse. There was a throwaway line earlier in the movie when the mum's talking to the police about how they've had death in the family, so they're kind of used to it by now so I'm not sure if that was put in to explain why Kayla really didn't seem to give a fuck when a lot was happening. She was a little bit upset but for the most part and what she's just seen take a moment take a breather for a second because you have seen some fucked up shit and your best friend has just died. And that's as well another question the person that programmed this into the game okay he made that leap and he made that step did he do nothing else with this information but put it into a game and it was picked up maybe 20 years later to be redistributed so he's not had any of the benefits until now. The movie doesn't quite go into that in any way. We just seem to understand that it was made in the 80s and then the dad kind of reawoken the curse in modern time. Years have passed and the developer is talking about the great benefits of this curse. He's clearly using them to his advantage in the experiment video we watch but he himself never went further with it for more benefits in his own life. And coming full circle, that character I said that kind of has authority within the housing he's only there so that Kayla can show that she's using the powers of this game and the benefits of it to only enact things on people that deserve it. She makes him kill himself. It's grotesque. It's very saw-like. And clearly she's going to do something different than the developer did because she's wanting to do it for good. I can fully respect that. Especially since she's been struggling with her mum. So maybe she's going to use it and help her in some way. The movie cuts off before we get to that. But look, that's it for my questions and things that kind of just took me back or threw me out of the movie. So in closing, this is just the latest in video game movies. Not a movie based on a video game, but a movie that's centred around a video game. And these type of movies just don't work. They work all the way up until that moment where they have to explain its origins. And everything crumble at that point because you can do a lot with the video game narrative. It could be very stylistic, it could be quite creepy and this movie ticks every box until it is then forced to explain itself and it just falls away. I thought the acting was really good other than a few instances from Kayla. Maybe she should show a little bit more remorse than she really does. Great chemistry and they're both very likeable characters. Some of the things I had to look away from whilst others I couldn't look away from because either what was happening was quite creepy or just hooked me. Although I thought the explanation as to how this all came about really didn't work too well. I thought the finale of this movie was very strong. I think it looked 
great and it had a lot of moving parts to it as well. In that very final act of the film, I had a great time with it. It was something a bit refreshing and something I've not seen often. I had a good time with this movie. That's speaking as someone who loves movies and loves games. I think there needs to be a large meeting somewhere where they sit down and really hash out what the possible rules are by bringing these two mediums together because they don't quite gel fully. Have you seen Choose or Die? If you have, let me know down below if we agree or disagree. And if you are new, please do hit subscribe. That would be fantastic to see and I've got new videos every week really to give you something to set you up for the weekend. And lastly, thank you so much for watching.